Hey kids, uh, welcome to chapter three, lesson two. Our topic and learning target today is how to estimate products using rounding. Uh, so right away in that target, uh, or this topic, I see that um, estimating means I'm not going to be finding exact answers. An estimate is not the exact answer. It's close. And I also see a keyword here, product. So that product, you should be thinking that we are going to be multiplying. When you see the word product, that's answer to a multiplying problem. So we're going to be estimating products using rounding. Uh, just as a reminder, when you see the Cornell note format on the notes, you should be following along on a note page or in your composition book. And another reminder that chapter three is a no calculator chapter. Uh, you may use a multiplication table okay, when we get to uh, multiplying, uh, but no calculators. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the first problem we're going to look at is how would we estimate 8.7 times 2.8? And what we're going to do first is we're going to round to the nearest whole number. We're going to round both of these decimals, 8.7 and 2.8, to the nearest whole number. Uh, I'm going to model my thinking on a number line for both of these. So 8.7 I know that that's between 8 and 9, and right in the middle would be 8.5. And you don't have to create the uh, number lines uh, when you're doing today's practice, but it, it I'm, I'm putting it in the notes just as a visual as what you could be thinking when you're rounding. So 8.7, it's between 8 and 9, 8.5 being right in the middle. So 8.7, I would say, is about, oh, right about there. So if I'm rounding to the nearest whole number, I'm going to round to 9. It's closer to 9. And same thing with 2.8. I'm going to round that to the nearest whole number. So it's between 2 and 3. Right in the middle would be 2.5. And 2.8 would be right about there, but it's closer to 3. So my estimate, the numbers that I would use for my estimate, instead of 8.7, I would make that a 9. And instead of 2.8, I would make that a 3. And my estimate, those two wavy lines, that means is about. So my answer to this problem or an estimate for this problem would be about 27. Okay, well that uh, for this strategy we were rounding to the nearest whole number. So this is what you're going to put. You have to write down what your estimates are when you're solving uh, problems today in your workbook. Okay, the next problem we're going to look at is how would we estimate uh, 42.6 times 37.2. Now this time we are going to round to the greatest place value. Uh, I should have said this at the very beginning. Uh, this is definitely a lesson where 
when you're checking the workbook in the front of the class, you may have different answers because these are estimates. These are not exact answers. There are problems where you, uh, we should always be close to each other, but you might have a, a little bit different of an estimate than what I came up with, and that's okay as long as it's close. So for this strategy, I'm instead of rounding to the nearest whole number, because the nearest whole number would be 43, this would be 43, and this would be 38, um, still not, that's not, those aren't numbers that I can easily estimate in my head. Uh, when you're estimating, that's what you're shooting for, is how can I get an estimate with, in my head that's quick and close without a calculator? So for this strategy, rounding to the greatest place value, I'm going to go out to the greatest place value, which 42.6, the greatest place value is in the tens, and I'm going to round it, I'm going to round it to the nearest 10 to make it easier. So 42.6, if I'm rounding to the nearest 10, it's going to be between 40 and 50. Okay, I'm rounding to the nearest, to the greatest place value, which is a 4 in the 10 spot, so I know that 42.6 is between 40 and 50. Well, what's right in the middle of that is 45, and 42.6 is about, oh, it's going to be, let's see, probably right about there. Okay, but it's closer to 40. So for my estimate for 42.6, I'm going to call it 40. Same thing with 37.2. My greatest place value is again in the tens. So it's between 30 and 40 this time, with the middle being 35. And 37.2 would be somewhere over in here. So it is closer to 40 than it is 30. So estimating 42.6 times 37.2, rounding to the greatest place value, I would estimate it is about 40 times 40. Now this is something that I can handle using mental math. 4 times 4 is 16, and 0, 0, I need to add two zeros. So I should have made those wavy lines. So our estimate for 42.6 times 37.2, it is going to be about 1,600, close to that. All right, um, one more example, and that is... How would we estimate 57.93 times 9.2? And this time, I'm going to use a combination of rounding to the nearest whole number and rounding to the greatest place value. Uh, when you're rounding, again, you're shooting for something that you can do using mental math. And if you're rounding to the nearest whole number instead of the greatest place value, this is going to give you a closer estimate, but it's also, it could be tougher to do using mental math. For example, 57.98, well, rounded to the nearest whole would be 58. Rounding this to the nearest whole would be 9. You might be able to mental math that. If you can, that would be a better estimate than rounding this to the greatest place value. I, though, am going to round this one to the greatest place value to make it easy in my head to do. So my thinking is this. I have 57.93, and on my number line, I'm rounding to the nearest, to the greatest place value. So I know that this is between 50 and 60, with the middle being 55. And 57.93 is going to be over here somewhere. So it is closer to 60. And 9.2, uh, 9.2, I am going to estimate to the nearest whole number.
So 9.2, it is between 9 and 10, with 9.5 being in the middle. 9.2 is going to be somewhere over here, so it is closer to 9. So my est let me tip this down. So my estimate for 57.93 times 9.2 is 60 times 9. And that's something that I can do with mental math. 6 times 9 is 54. And I'm adding one zero. My estimate for that one is about 540. So again, today, uh, you do not have to write down, if, this, if it helps you to write down the number lines and, and think about rounding, you sure can. I was mostly showing this to show how I'm thinking uh, out loud. But you definitely have to have this. On all your work today, you have to include what did you estimate the numbers to be um, and... That wraps up chapter three, lesson two. Oh, I almost forgot. There is a puzzle for today's lesson. Here is the puzzle for today. A mystery number puzzle. So let me explain. There are two mystery numbers and two clues. Here are the clues. The sum of the mystery numbers is 14. And the product of the mystery numbers is 45. What are the two mystery numbers? That is today's puzzle. Uh, we will check for who can solve this hidden treasure on the next lesson. Um, see you next time, Chapter 3, Lesson 3.